welcome back to the channel uh, i do apologize for the noise if you can hear my background it's like thundering and raining going on also if you're looking at the camera quality this is the moto g stylus 5g that i'm recording on at home in dim lighting just to give you an idea of how the camera is i do this for every video i record with a particular phone's camera so you can see the quality in real time see real time so anyway with further ado this is the EOS network um, today we're going to talk about the Revel V Plus 5G. Now I did purchase this phone from Metro by T-Mobile. Um, the regular retail price you can get is for $199. <clears throat> it does come in one color. You're going to get that purplish looking black, that magenta looking color right here. The same as the box. Um, what else do we have going on here? Oh, sorry. Let me tell you about the prices. So $199 for the phone itself if you're buying it straight out. Regular price if you aren't eligible for upgrade. Um, new lines, the phone is actually free. So if you're adding a line or if you uh, need a new number, basically, add a line, need a new number, typically the same thing. It's just adding a line if, if onto an existing account while a new line is new number altogether, new service. The phone will actually be free right now. Um, currently, the activation fee is normally $20, but it looks like Metro by T-Mobile is actually acti uh, activating. They're... Uh, Removing that fee temporarily right now. There's times where promotions go on where you don't have to pay activation fee. This is one of those times. So I actually got the phone for roughly, I don't know, about 50 something, 56, 53 dollars total. Because I just paid for the 50 dollar plan. Phone was free, taxes, everything. And I was walk out the store. Good to go. Now, uh, I don't know the upgrade price, but it can't be that expensive. It is a Revel device. So just keep that in mind that once we talk about this particular device, um, when it's all said and done, I want to let you know who this device is for and how good does it work. All right, so first things first, this did release July 12th, I believe. It was released July 12th under Metro by T-Mobile. Um, you're looking at 6.8 6 inch screen, excuse me. It's an I, uh, IPS LCD screen, 720 by 1640. So this isn't a 1080p screen. The Moto phone that I'm recording off of, the G-Stylus 5G is. So if you're a person where you want a sharper picture, you're going to want to pick a different device. But I will say it's not bad. It's not like the colors look terrible. Um, it does seem like a tad bit faded because they use its cheap screens. But the phone so far is pretty decent. Um, <clears throat> does ship out the box with, actually, let me correct that. The PPI is 257. Um, Android 11 ships right out the box with this particular device. I can't tell you if it's going to get another software update. Probably for um, security. But I don't know about for Android itself. Typically, the, the Alcatel phones or cheaper phones, they just release them every year. So by this time next year or you know around this time, they'll probably release the next model. And then you'll be good to go from there. You'll probably just purchase that if you're interested. Uh, now, here's the processor. And when I say this processor, I'm just going to give you the quick version of what it's almost identical to. So this does have the MediaTek the, 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 the Dimensity 700 5G. I know, it sounds like a lot. MediaTeks aren't exactly the processors that I care about. I prefer the Snapdragons when it comes to cheaper phones. Um, but that's just me. Each person is different. A more attacker might think of something different. But if we're talking about processor, right? This is almost the equivalent of the Snapdragon 480, which is in the OnePlus N10 N200 5G and the Moto G Stylus 5G. Very similar. It does edge it out in certain benchmarks. Not by much, but just a few points here and there. But we have to account for that those phones are one pluses and that other phone I mentioned is a Motorola. So when it comes to software and software support, uh, you might have a better experience on those phones. Personally, out of the three, I prefer the one plus software out of the three. Then a second Motorola, then the uh, what is it called? The Rebel software. These typically are close to stock Android. Like this is the closest you'll get to probably stock Google. There's no bloatware app well there is a couple of bloatware apps like metro play metro zone certain ones that they typically have but for the most part there really isn't much bloatware on this phone so that's something it's not going to take up gigs and gigs of space of nonsense apps that's something that boost mobile used to do you'll have a 32 gig phone and 12 gigs worth of ridiculous apps that don't make sense anyway moving forward 64 gigs internally and just like those other two phones i mentioned that has four gigs of ram now <clears throat> Three cameras, 16 megapixel right here. This is the wide lens. You have your five ultra wide. 
that you have your two megapixel right here. Now, the camera does not record front and back camera, just so you know. It only records 30 frames per second. It doesn't go up to 60. So if you're expecting that, this isn't the phone that's going to do that. Of course, typically people that buy this particular device isn't necessarily looking for the best um, performance. You just need something upgraded from the last phone that's less laggy and, you know, that's how you probably get phones every couple years or so. So this is definitely be an upgrade for those that are coming from the Rebel 4 or the Rebel 4 Plus. Um, it'll not buy much though. But physically, I will say that the phone is much better looking. We'll get to that. And this does, unfortunately, I didn't say this in my last review with the Moto. The Moto fingerprint is on the back while the Rebel has a lock screen button fingerprint. So it looks like they got rid of that blinking notification light over here because I sent some messages that didn't pop up. I could be wrong. Maybe you could turn it on in the settings and I'll correct myself if I can. But this acts as your lock button. In addition, you rub your finger on it, your unlock button. I already set up service on it and I already set up the lock just to show you how fast it works. So you can see it again. Here we are. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So moving forward, the front camera is 16 megapixels. Of course, it has Bluetooth, GPS, just has NFC. I need to start saying that in my videos. Um, side mounted fingerprint. Now, I do not believe this phone has face unlock though so for those that want it face unlock you're not going to get it on this particular device it only ha oh i'm sorry i'm wrong absolutely wrong right here face unlock if you can see it so it does have it normally uh it's a feature that it actually is mentioned in the spec sheet but it's not apparently so it does have face unlock so you know minus what i just said um it does have a 5000 mah battery not removable obviously because most of the phones that's how they make them that's how they make their money in addition to that, um, it actually supports 18 watt fast charging. So I'll show you what's actually in the box. If this thing decides to open, oh, I don't want to tear it. <laughs> Try to get this box open. Here we are. So inside the box, you're actually going to get your, you know, books that you can file. If this decides to come out, I don't know why. I don't know what they were thinking making the box like this with this little. What is this? There we go. It made my life a lot easier. <laughs> so, ooh, I actually never looked at this cord. So I do like this cord. It's not USB-C to USB-C, but it's a nice little braided wire. Not bad. Let's take a look at the charging brick itself. All right. Uh, doesn't really say anything on it. It just says AC-DC charger. Wow. Um, they really went all out for this phone. I can tell you that. Boy, they love their customer base. All right, so let's just pluck and file this nonsense over here. We'll never look at it again. These phones don't come with headphones. Here's the T-Mobile box. We're gonna go ahead and put it over here. I did get the traditional to-go case, $20 at Metro by T-Mobile if you pick it up. Um, Amazon doesn't have too much of a big selection of this on a simple fact this is a brand new phone. Um, so I did purchase this case for $20. And as for the tempered glass, don't mind the little circle you see right here. Oops, the circle you can see, let me lock that for you. And the circle, I'm actually using my Stylo Tempered Glass, Stylo 5. Uh, I had extra ones, so, and they're both the same size screen, so they fit each other, 6.8. Now, now that we got all that fun excitement out of the way, let's talk about the actual phone itself. All right, so what we have here so far is your volume rockers on your left-hand side. That's how I typically prefer my phones. That's how they've always been until, you know, in the recent three, four years, five years or so. Three or four years. Uh, you can have put an SD card inside this phone. Um, here is your SD card slot right here. You do have your charger port standard for every single Android. Your speakers over here. Um, you do have your headphone jack right here. So all, you know, I, can't, I can honestly confidently say that all US mid-ranger phones come with headphone jacks. And like I was telling you before, this is the lock button. It also doubles down, put a finger on it. At the fingerprint you press it in to actually lock your phone or unlock your phone and just so you know what these cases don't be alarmed when you see this cutout this cutout has to be here for your device because you in order for you to use your fingerprint scanner all right so with that being said i do like the design of the phone um it feel I'll, honestly it's still a cheap back phone but it does feel much more premium than the other all of the other Alcatel phones, I'll say that confidently, uh, Rebel phones. Like the Rebel 5G, I liked that phone when I first got it. Unfortunately, I wasn't YouTubing back then. I was just buying phones, playing with them, and then, you know, I sell them like I normally do. Oh, I had so many phones. Anyway, 
Um, this feels like a solid phone. You could definitely tell by looking at this, they kind of looked at the iPhone. You could definitely tell because when you look at the dimensions of the phone, it's smooth. It reminds you of an iPhone in a sense. It doesn't look like an iPhone at all. But what I mean by it is you can hold it in your phone like the iPhone 12 where it's solid. Most Androids feel slippery because of how they make them. This does feel just a tad bit slippery, but because of the shape of the device, the square and the rounded corners, it's very easy to hold. <clears throat> Excuse me, under the weather. And it does feel like it has a little bit of weight to it. So it's not going to feel like you have a cheap phone in your hand. Now, performance is a different story. Now, like I was saying to you before, it does use the Snapdragon, I'm sorry, the MediaTek 700, 5G, whatever it is. But for all intensive purposes, I'm going to just say that this is the equivalent, literally the benchmark equivalent of the Snapdragon 480. So if you buy this, if you're looking at this, if you're looking at the uh, Moto Stylus 5G, which is the green shiny phone with the stylus, basically the new stylo. If you're looking at the OnePlus N200 5G, just remember those three phones are in the same category in terms of processors. It's a matter of internal memory, which is the Moto's the only one with the 128. It's a matter of the stylus, the Moto's the only one with the stylus. But also, OnePlus has an amazing face unlock, which works better than both of these combined. While, you know, the Revel, the Alcatel, the Revel 5, the Revel V Plus, these names, I tripped myself over them. Um, it doesn't really stand out to me. Now, I've always had issue with Revel software. This is just a full disclosure for me, where I would set a live wallpaper. After a couple hours, or an hour, or half an hour, it would kind of just default to my regular screen. Um, I did have an issue also with the Revel previous generation. Where whenever I receive certain notifications like from, a, what would I say it's called? Offer up, for example. They would not come up. The email would come up, but not the notification itself. I didn't have that issue with Messenger or anything else like that. So if you're a big person on offer up, just be aware. It's possible your messages might not pop up letting you know that, hey, someone wants to buy a product for you or they answered your question. Because you can send messages back and forth through offer up. I don't know if this phone can do that. Yeah, quite frankly, I wasn't going to try it on a simple fact that, again, I can't nitpick with every single app. No phone is perfect, even at twelve, thirteen, four hundred, two thousand dollar price point. No phone is perfect. Anywho, what I did want to show you guys today was how this actually plays games like Genshin Impact. Now, the reason I use Genshin Impact and the reason I use Call of Duty as a standard is because typically you'll see YouTubers play little little temple run games or certain little uh candy crush anything to play candy crush so you need something that's high intensive so you can actually see how well it works so what i want to do is sign into this application show you how it runs i will say that the graphics are on normal settings now just like call of duty if you lower the settings for a phone graphically it will run smoother especially with the frame rate and the graphics i'm leaving it at normal just to give you a general idea of how the phone looks, how much uh, lag or stutter is going to get, and you can determine if this is something that you want to use. Typically, phones in the past could not handle Genshin Impact, but these cheaper, low, I'm going to put these in a the low budget category. Like when we're talking about the Snapdragon 750G, I'll put that in mid. But when we're talking about this type of processor, which again equals like this, the, uh, honestly, I can't even say what this equals on paper. It's not a 690 Snapdragon. I would say probably the 660. No, it's better than the 665. It's 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 hard to determine how well this processor runs in terms of the phone world. So I'm just showing you how the phone looks. The game looks. I am having, like you saw, a little uh, lag stutter right there with this particular game. Of course, like I said, you could put it on lower settings. Show you how it looks on a fight of enemy. Here you are. So it is possible to use this phone comfortably. Like if you're a person where you want to use it for gaming, as you can see, it, it's lagging. Without a doubt, it's going to lag. This is a cheap phone. It's low end. This phone is not meant to play this type of game. And so far, I've tried it earlier. It hasn't gotten hot so far. Warm, definitely, but not hot. Of course, I didn't play this for hours. Like I typically do other things like Netflix and, you know, just really abuse the phone to see how much it can take. So anywho, this, phone, this game can be played fairly easily. And that is this. So what we're going to do is we're going to swipe out of here um, and go over to Call of Duty to show you how that runs. 
Let's go over here. All right. So we're going to load in, just do a quick match. Not a full match, but just show you the responsiveness of the screen, too. Because what I will say is um, higher-end phones, typically when you swipe, the swipe is better on those phones. Especially with playing games, it's more responsive and it moves faster. Similar to using a controller compared to using a mouse. Now, I prefer a controller because that's what I grew up on. But if you've ever used a mouse playing an FPS shooter or something, you can... He, it, you move at inhuman speed and it's easier to get kills in that sense but you know they both have their pros and cons so like the touch is responsive i will say that it doesn't feel as good as uh the a52 5g the moto it feels a little laggish to the touch when it comes to the moto 5g uh i had to say the correct phone the moto stylus 5g but what i will say so far is that when it comes to just leaving applications this does a way better job than the Moto. Like the Moto lags, like gives you a, 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 a lag, like just a one second delay or so, every single time it goes through apps. While this phone practically, um, you can you can leave an application, answer a phone, it didn't give me any issues so far where you know, you just, you have a device that slows down, you don't see who's calling you because the processor can't keep up. Like it does a very, very good job so far. That's why I say this is the <clears throat> this processor is the equivalent of a Snapdragon 480, but it is technically on paper better. And depending on the parts that are in the phone, because just because all RAM's not the same, all processors aren't the same, aren't, all screens aren't the same. There's different calibers based on whatever company makes it. So, and <clears throat> as you can see, it's very responsive. Sorry, I cut myself on the explanation. Basically, it works very well. So if you're playing games like Call of Duty, I don't think you'll have an issue. Like I said, I did have a tougher time. Like if you see my screen right now, if I'm moving around, it does feel a little sluggish. Like I have to swipe a little bit more. Just, But you can always up the sensitivity level if need be. So as you can see, the game works just fine. There hasn't been any lag in this particular game because Call of Duty is better optimized than a lot of games. Especially since this is a super popular game and it makes sense. But, like I said, I will say that it's running very well. It runs very well, Call of Duty. It'll play games like NBA Live and certain devices just fine. And um, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. And I really should help this team, but I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm about to leave this game. Oh, got killed. All right, so I'm leaving this game. So, like I said, it, it actually swipes out the app really fast like a typical phone if this was my moto it would have gave me a little lag before it did that then swiped out so this goes to show that this does handle applications like gaming better than the moto 5g especially given the fact that this is a 720p screen while the while the moto is a 1080p screen so typically the better screen it uses more of the gpu the graphics of the game looks better that's a factor in gaming just keep that in mind anyway <clears throat> just give you the verdict of this phone Oh boy, to be honest, it's a decent device. If, <laughs> I'm trying to say this correctly, it's a decent device if you're using it. Let's say you're getting this for your son, a child. It's a decent device. If you're getting this for yourself for productivity and camera, uh, it's okay. I mean, the megapixel camera is, again, most of these mid tier, not mid tier, most of these low end phones went outside. In bright sunlight, the cameras excel and perform very well, especially the Moto. It's a 48 megapixel camera. But when it comes to low lighting, like I am at home in my dining room table, it doesn't look too good. As you can see, it looks grainy. It's hard to focus on the particular devices. And this camera isn't necessarily better than the Moto's. It, it, it's all about, it's a little bit less, I will say. But of course, remember, the phone costs less also. The price of getting the phone is free in the store. The Moto isn't. The Moto, I think, I believe is... Seven eighty nine dollars to get the phone like uh, as a new account. So when you look at that price difference, some people don't care. Some people aren't concerned about software. They just want a phone that works. They want a phone that charges. This actually supports eighteen watt charging, while the Moto says ten. But uh, I think the Moto goes up to fifteen watt. That's typically the regular charger they used to ship in a box. Um, this supports eighteen watt charging, so it's going to charge faster than the Moto. Uh, it's more stable in terms of the OS, meaning. It doesn't mean that apps are going to crash because it is a Revel phone. Let's remember that. 
it just means that it's less bloatware and the processor is slightly better so you might get better, better performance with certain apps but you'll be losing 64 gigs because the modal is 128 the stylus 5g um same size screen if you, i'm not sure if people are into the whole hole punch right here i prefer the hole punch instead of the uh I don't know what this thing is called. Chin, eyeball. I don't, I don't remember what it's called. But it's not a bad device. It's not a bad device at all. Um, who is this for? For a kid, absolutely. For an adult, I would suggest this over any of the other Rebels out, outside of the Rebel 5G. But the only reason I won't suggest that one is because that's an older model that came out last year, I believe. That's like a $400 phone. They haven't really adjusted the price on it. They're probably going to discontinue it soon. This one is updated to Android 11. That works with the optimization better with applications. It's a beautiful looking phone. You know, if you're into that purple, it has the triple camera setup. That you know, this is typically how cameras are going to look for a lot of these phones with the protruding a little bit, sticking out the camera bump. It's a decent. It's a decent device. I don't think that you'll be disappointed with this particular device. Now, if you compare it to Motorola or the One Plus, the software is a little bit different than those than theirs. So again. Everyone has a preference. I know people that still want LG phones because of the software. Even if another phone is better than it, they just prefer their Stylo 6 because they're so used to it. So again, it's a good device. If you get it, it's free when you add a line. It's, if you're porting, I don't suggest getting this phone. Primarily because you can get a better device like a Samsung A52 right now for $99 under Metro by T-Mobile. There are other more high-end devices you can get for a better price immediately. Even the Moto One Ace 5G has a Snapdragon 750G with 6 gigs of RAM. And that phone, I think, will be like $19 as a port. But if you're doing a new line and you don't have that type of money, then my suggestion is, out of the Rebel devices, this one is decent. The uh, OnePlus N10 5G, I'm sorry, N10, the OnePlus N200 5G, I don't think that's free of the add line. So this is will be the ideal choice for some people. And it works well. The fingerprint works great. Um, I'll show you again. Just put my finger on it. It works really good. The camera is, is all right. The camera's all right. It's 64 gigs, so you get about 55 or so uh, usable. Let me just let you know here. Wow, use 49. I forgot Genshin Impact is like a 10 gig game, and Call of Duty is like a 6 or 7 gig game. But normally you get about 50 something gigs total out of the phone. And again, you can use an SD card for pictures and videos if you choose. So I think it's a decent device. It's not the best device. It's not something for necessarily longevity. It's something to get you through where you won't be angry when you pick it up. Like, it's, it's going to work. It's going to do your Facebook. It's going to do your Messenger. It's going to do all those applications. But just remember, it is a Revel. I will always suggest you get a phone that typically is, like, better software, like a OnePlus or Motorola, definitely. But the phone's good. I like it. I'll be probably giving it away to a family member or something if they need it, or I'll just put it back in a box and have it as a rainy day phone in case something happens to one of my other phones on the accounts. Anyway, I made this video way too long with the shaky cam. And if you like, hit that like button. Subscribe, of course, because I'm trying to grow my channel. I enjoy tech and I enjoy talking to people. Whether we agree or disagree, I still enjoy it. Anyway, I will definitely see you guys in the next video.